Hello and welcome. This is AI Behavior Essentials Part 4 and in this video, we are going to build our first combat behavior which is strafing and shooting. If you saw the previous video, you might have noticed some issues with collision and RVO avoidance which made the movement very jittery and the bots were getting stuck and then being flinged across the map. So, I have been working hard at it, and finally all those issues are gone as you can see in this demo. Our combat behaviors are going to be partly based on this video. This video talks about a layered approach to combat, achieved through dynamically assignable combat roles. For this project, we will be focusing on the engager and the defender roles. In place of the ambushers, we are going to have snipers. In the future, if I get time, I may also look at implementing the ambushers, but that won't be covered in this series. Let's open up the character base underscore VP blueprint and copy these settings. So, we want to be able to prevent the bots from getting stuck and clumping up. To do that, we are going to have to use RVO avoidance. But, it makes the movement very jittery and it doesn't stop the bots from getting stuck either. So, after a lot of trial and error, I came up with these settings. Basically, the bots can walk through each other, if they absolutely had to, like, if they had no other choice. But, we are going to structure our navigation queries in such a way, that they don't do that, and, on top of that, we are going to have RVO turned on, which will slightly push away other bots. And hopefully, if everything goes right, they will look okay. Let's also take a look at the character movement component. Just copy all the settings shown here. I am also going to provide a download link to the project in the description section. In the avoidance section, of the character movement component, you'll find a variable called avoidance consideration radius. I found that if you increase this value, the jitteriness increases. A value of 100 works for me, but, you may have to adjust this value. Also, the avoidance weight, from what I can tell, is the intensity of the push. Again, feel free to adjust this value to find what works for you. For our strafing behavior, we will be using the EQS system. So, let's take a look at the EQS queries first. I am going to show you all the settings. Just copy them as shown here. The enemy query context is a custom EQS context that I'm going to talk about in a minute. Now, if the bot gets too close to the target, we want to find a spot to move away from the target, which, will again be done using an EQS query. So, let's take a look at that query as well. The enemy query context is, like I said, a custom EQS context. To create an EQS context, add a C++ class inheriting from ENV query context. In the header file, add the provide context function as shown here. In the CPP file, start by adding these includes. In the provide context function, after the super call, I test if the controller and the target actor are valid, and if they are, I return the target actor as the enemy. The target actor, is the blackboard key that is set inside the select target task. We are also going to need a custom behavior tree task, to filter the locations generated by the EQS query. So, let's take a look at that now. In the find strafe location task, start by adding the execute task function as shown. This is the EQS query that will be set inside the editor. To get the locations generated by the query, we will need to bind the location seeker query finished function, which will be called when the query has finished running. Strafe location is the output of this task and the bots are going to move to this vector. Now, we want the bots to select locations that are at least a specified distance away from other bots. So, we are going to filter all the points using the isDistance greater than x function which will give us a true or false result. Also, add this include in the header file. Let's move over to the CPP file and add these include so that we don't get errors later. In the execute task function, I check if both the controller and the EQS query are valid. If they are, 
I run the query with run mode all matching, and then bind the query finished function. Then we return with success. If either the controller or the query are not valid we return with failed so that we can try again. The location seeker query finished function provides access to the result of the query, which can be stored inside an array of vectors, and then we can loop over the array to find the vector that is at least a given distance away from other bots and which has the highest EQS score. Then I set the best one as the move to location blackboard key. In the is distance greater than X function, if this is the only bot, we always return true. Otherwise we return true or false based on whether this vector is X distance away from each bot in the same team. Now we also want the bots to be able to fire their weapon. So we will have to write another task. Let's take a look at the fire weapon task next. As usual, start by adding the execute task function. The bots will only be able to fire when this bool is true. In the CPP file, add these includes first. In the execute task function, I check if the controller is valid. If not I return failed. Then I check if the character is valid. If not I also return failed. Lastly, I check if the target actor is not valid, or it is already dead, or if the should fire bool is set to false. If any of these are true, we stop firing. Next, I perform a capsule trace from the bot's location, towards the direction it wants to fire in. If, the capsule trace hits another bot belonging to the same faction, we stop shooting and lower the gun. Capsule trace is a function inside the character base class which I will talk about in a minute. The start and stop weapon fire functions are also functions from the character base class and these are the same functions the player uses for firing. The start weapon fire function starts the fire timer and the stop weapon fire clears the fire timer handle. Let's also take a look at the character base class. In here, add the capsule trace function as shown. It returns a F hit result which we will use to check if, the trace has hit something we care about. This is the trace we call inside the fire weapon task. In the CPP file copy the code as shown here, it is very similar to the trace provider function but instead of doing a line trace it does a capsule trace. Next, in the take damage function, add this line. This will make it so that our blackboard component will know every time we receive damage so that we can react to it. In the start weapon fire function, add this line. This is placeholder for now. Later, we will implement bullet spread properly. Now, open up the AI controller and add the key ID for a blackboard key, called damaged. We will drive some behavior in our behavior tree based on the value of this key. In the CPP file, inside the onPossess function, set the key ID as shown here. Now, at the beginning of the video, if you remember, I talked about combat roles. So, let's implement those roles now, open up the project header and add an enum called eCombat roles as shown here. Now, go to the character base class and add a variable for combat role in the public section, and also make it a new property and edit anywhere, so that, we can edit it on a, per actor basis. Back in the AI controller, just like all the other keys we added earlier, add another key for combat role, register it in the onPossess function, and then set it to the value of the combat role variable, from the character base class, at event begin play. Now, build the solution and open up the editor. Now, we also need a way to set the damaged key to false, after we have reacted to the damage. So, let's write another task. This is a very simple task. In the execute task function, it makes sure that the controller is valid, and if it is, it sets the damaged blackboard key to false, so that, we can stop reacting to the received damage. In the CPP file, you will also have to add these includes. Back in the editor, let's start building our behavior tree. First we need to add a few keys to our blackboard. Move over to the blackboard tab and add all the keys as shown here. To add an enum created in C++, we just need to provide the enum name under the key type section.
That's it for the blackboard, we can now start building out the behavior tree. In here, under the attack state, after we run the target selection task, we check if the target actor is valid. If it is we run the combat logic, otherwise, we stop shooting and set the AI state to lost enemy with the run mode this bot. Down here, we have separate sub-branches for the combat roles. For now, we are only concerned with the engager role. Other roles will be implemented in later videos. So, let's take a look at the engager role. First set the animation state. Then if the distance is greater than a given value, move towards the target while shooting. The distance check decorator is a custom decorator and I will talk about it in a minute. Now if the distance is less than that value, check if we are damaged and if so, strafe to the left or right while shooting. Once the move is finished, set the damaged key to false. If not damaged, check if we are too close to the target, if so, find a location away from the target and move to it while shooting. If all of these conditions are false, every few seconds, move a little bit to the left or right and keep shooting. Also, in this sub-branch we should not be setting the damaged key, so, I am going to delete this task from here. Let's now talk about the distance check decorator. This is a C++ class inheriting from BT decorator underscore blackboard base. Here, in the header file, add the constructor and override the calculate raw condition value function as shown here. In the C++ file, add all the includes shown here, then in the constructor, provide a name for the decorator, set create node instance to true and then, set an actor filter for the blackboard key. This function, returns true or false based on whether the distance between the controlled pawn and the target actor is greater than a given value. That's it. Let's now play and test if everything is working. As you can see it is working now. But, I had to build at least three separate versions of this system to keep the bots from getting stuck and, and then being launched across the map. It just took a lot more work than I was expecting. Anyways, please subscribe to the channel and like this video so that more people can watch it. Thanks for watching.